last night. I hope you enjoyed today. And good evening to all of you. And um, using happy and good and peaceful words because these words will work towards reducing our stress. And we're going to be talking about um, stress today, um, specifically because, well, COVID, lockdown, the situation that the world's in at the moment, lots of unknown, lots of uncertainty, and we, we don't really know. And, um, you know, lots of um, unemployment, lots of jobs lost, lots of companies folding, um, people on the front line really, really stressed, uh, speak to doctors on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, they really are feeling the stress and, and the fear that comes with the stress. And then we start getting all sorts of things like, um, you know, kidney disorders, um, especially regarding fear. But the stress affects nearly everything. And um, each person's a little bit different because it, um, it will manifest physically in your weakest area. So we can um, actually attribute stress to more than 95% of all physical diseases that we see. And, um, you know, the source of the stress can be, uh, can be physical, obviously, if there's been a big accident. Um, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and environmental. So we'll touch a little bit on epigenetics as well. So lots of stresses. And I thought what, what we'll do specifically is just have a look and see biologically, you know, what stress does. Um, and then I'll show you some of the, the, the other things that cause also disease and stress. And then we can um, come up with a couple of practical points to, to live a stress as stress-free as possible in the city. Um, and um, I'll show you some lovely adaptogenic herbs and things that also um, work with us and maintain um, the adrenals, the nervous system, the hormone system as best as possible. So I'm going to just get the, get the, um, the video for us. I mean, the the slides. Let's get the slides. All right, let's just start here. Okay, so stress, the biological response, epigenetics, and the root cause of disease. All right, so here we go. Some of the stress causes. Currently, obviously, COVID, we talked about it. Um, not enough money. That's the current system that we're dealing with and sort of designed to make sure that no one's, we always got enough money, not don't, always don't have enough money, should I say. And there's um, always some extra bill to pay and something else that sort of breaks the bank. So um, that's, that's, that's a fact. Some, most people have spent their salary by the 15th of the month. And, um, you know, there's no real hope and massive stress straight after that. Other people might actually do some financial courses and actually work out how to become what they call financially free. And that does reduce stress a huge amount. Um, but again, you know, expenses keep going up. So one has to constantly work on, on, on that aspect. Um, you know, job losses, we talked about that. It's been severe. The world has experienced severe job losses and, um, severe stress as a result of it. We've seen with our SCIO devices, when we run humanity, we've seen, you know, um, very low oxygen levels, low brain amplitude, low adrenal um, functioning, um, you know, poor hydration, sugar regulation, out of control, high stress levels. So there's no doubt it's had a big effect. And that kind of ripple effect will affect our relationships. Um, not only brought about by, by COVID, but just generally, um, stressful relationship can increase our stress. Uh, some parents stress about their children, some children stress about their parents, <laughs> some um, spouses also stress about each other. Some people study, uh, stress about academics, their studies. Other people stress about a pain that they've incurred. So it could be a stress which caused the pain, which causes the stress. So it's a nice little cycle that's happening there. Many people stress about the trivialities of life. And it's called rationalization in the head as well. And 
one can't let go of them. You sit in a restaurant, there's someone with a top on that you don't like, and it becomes a big issue, and it affects your digestion, it affects your eating. Um, other people could worry about a dog barking, for example, or a fly, or I don't know, a car that needs petrol that doesn't have petrol. I'm not sure all these things, but these are really lower astral level things. And um, yeah, they, they cause a big effect on stress and especially our breathing. Um, you know, they reduce, the, they reduce the amount of oxygen coming in and obviously leaving as well. And that creates quite a big stress. So we've got to also catch ourselves and witness what we're doing and what we're stressing about. And then on the emotional side as well, um, one can look at stress because stress stress can be caused by um, incidences, childhood events, ancestral, hereditary, karmic events. And um, one needs to question these emotional stresses and actually question whether it was already decided, it's interwoven into your sort of tapestry of life and whether in fact these emotional stressful incidences are, are really catalysts to push you to a quantum higher state in, in, in evolvement. So one thing's for sure, the body's constantly evolving. So maybe these little stresses, if we stood back and looked at them, um, can be unraveled, um, put out there for what they are. And then I always say to people, you know, um, work out what the gift in this instance is. You know, who are you now that you wouldn't be if you hadn't have experienced the stressful incident for example so we can look we can look physically mentally emotionally spiritually too because also um your 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 um soul your spirit will remind you if you're not doing what you need to do and that's normally a reminder is in is pain it's a pain cycle so um all of all of these things need to tie in together to reduce our stress but we need to be on top of our game with stress and we need to have our diaries in order and we need to book time off and book relaxation and book time with friends and book time to be creative. And there'll be a little bit more a little bit later. So just as a, an overall, this is not an exhaustive list, but just to focus our mind on, on causes of stress. Some of them are under our control and others aren't. So let's work on the ones that we can control easily and then start eliminating others. The, the best question to ask is, does it serve me? The next best question to ask is, is it causing a block in my life? And those answers will steer you. And then you ask yourself, what's your passion? When you get that right, you're off. All right. So here we've got um, the maintenance of life. So this, this man, Claude Bernard, Claude Bernard, noted that the maintenance of life is critically dependent on keeping our internal milieu constant in the face of changing environment. So we have to keep that centered. We need to keep um, grounded the internal milieu of the body, which covers physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So that was, you know, uh, he died in 1961. So he talked about it and he talked about the fact that there's an ever changing environment. And boy, do we know that. So um, this is where it's there's even more importance, especially nowadays, to keep our body intact, our immune system in, in good shape, um, ready to ward off infections, toxins, war, um, ward off, um, you know, fear. And um, to keep that, to keep us centered within the change because we're going to change we even have very special which which um it's got a wrong connotation but they're, they're actually viruses so a virus is a fragment a dna fragment we have very special dna fragments in the environment we're breathing them way more than any small genetically modified uh, viruses also here to cause stress but there's loads of very beneficial ones that have been here forever constantly evolving us so when the DNA changes, we're constantly evolving. So that's happening without us even doing anything. And then the researcher Cannon in 1921, he called this um, keeping of the milieu constant homeostasis. And he has a very special person, uh, Dr. Sele, and we hear a lot about him with our quantum skio doctors and the QUEX. And he basically used the term stress to represent the effects of anything that seriously threatens this homeostasis, anything. The actual or perceived threat to an organism is referred to as the stressor. 
and the response to the stressor is called the stress response. Okay, although stress responses evolved as adaptive processes, Seller observed that severe prolonged stress responses might lead to tissue damage and disease. And that's what we measure with our quantum devices as well. The body's reaction to stress. Is it very extreme or is the body coping? And we like to check that at the end of our assessments and after a month or two months to see that we've brought the, well, we've assisted the body's coping mechanism, enhanced it to cope with stress. By, by maybe detoxifying the body, by maybe feeding the body, by maybe letting go of anxieties and, and too much rationalization in the head, by maybe giving getting rid of emotions that are not serving us anymore, re, re, repairing the DNA. So all sorts of things. So it's, it's really um, important that we don't prolong the stress. So um, from a mental point of view, what happens when there's stress, we, and there's a story involved with the stress, we end up carving almost a trench in the brain, a chemical um, neurological trench when we go up and down that trench and it becomes a chemical imbalance, a chemical distortion as well. Very hard to remove, very hard to shift someone in that very negative, prolonged stressed state into, into a positive situation. Very, very, very difficult. And unfortunately, many people die in that very negative stressed space. And they just tend to attract stress wherever they go. They cannot help it if they just, it just, they just bring it on and they keep bringing it on. And um, as I say, very, very difficult to deal with this. And um, yeah, so the more that the body goes out of alignment, the, the, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual goes out of alignment and disease really becomes more prolific. So we do need to try help these people and, um, you know, um, resolve some of these things. So I think some of you all know some people that's very difficult. So just to say at the outset also that um, there's a thing called eustress and distress. So eustress is positive stress, but we need it. We need it as human beings. We, some people need it more than others. And there's negative stress, namely distress. And that's what we don't want. So it's, it's kind of a bell-shaped curve. And so it's used to positive, 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 and then boing, too much, and it becomes distress. So you become overloaded at work. Um, or you become overloaded and overwhelmed by caring for somebody who's really ill. So it's a very fine line between the use stress and the distress. And what I put down there is adrenaline is necessary for us as human beings to stand upright. In the morning, we need some adrenaline. We have to. And then we use it um, beneficially from a, a use stress point of view. And then when it gets too much, it becomes distress and boy, we want to lie down. We have a nervous breakdown or, or whatever the case is and it puts us back, back lying down again. So, you know, we've got to really, really watch, um, watch the stress thing and be on top of our game all the time. Now, what I want to show you is um, a video. I just want to see if I can actually play it with this or whether this was supposed to close. I don't know. The stress oh, response. All right. In stressful situations, the body switches on its autonomic nervous system and neurobiological processes in an attempt to maintain homeostasis. The body is prepared for its reaction to stress. In the brain, the hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus, stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, releases the hormone corticotrophin releasing factor, CRF. The CRF activates the pituitary gland to release the adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. This in turn alerts the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are located on top of each kidney. The ACTH from the pituitary gland stimulates the adrenal cortex to release cortisol. At the same time, neurons in the hypothalamus signal the medulla to release epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, noradrenaline. These hormones then push the body into hyperalertness. That's just a little summary about what we want to speak about now. 
carrying on with where we are. Move from there, and I'll show you another one in a moment. So let me get my battery. Let's just go one slide down here. So we've talked about that. We've seen how stress, what happens. And this is a summary of what you've just actually watched. So you'll get it on the recording. Um, we, the, the initial stress response, the body stress response starts in the hypothalamus. And too often we see on our devices a very big problem with the hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal gland, and the adrenals. And I'm going to show you a live example just now. So this is where it starts, and then a message is sent from pituitary to the hypothalamus, and this is then set, um, uh, send stress hormones down to the adrenals that sit on top of the kidneys. The message is sent, and then we release cortisol. The stress hormones are then released and attached to receptors in the blood. Um, that action occurs to get the job done. I, I, the cortisol and the receptors that has attached to interact with each other with other cells sorry receptors are located everywhere throughout the body because the fact that cortisol is essential for so many biological functions that take place in the body so we need some cortisol we need adrenaline we need noradrenaline but not too much although there are receptors located everywhere they have the ability to detect when enough is enough eventually enough stress hormones are released and they've done their job after this, the cortisol that was released travels back up the message system and the receptors that were attached shut it down. So this is a whole biofeedback um, loop that happens. And, um, you know, the first time we, 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 when we, we pick up that stress, the breathing increases, it gets more shallow, we start sweating, we start panting. It's the fight or flight syndrome. And that's what we, that's what basically exactly this whole process, which we saw in the video. So here's something also very interesting. Um, and it's got to do with cortisol. So coconut oil contains the precursors. It's the only thing, a little bit of maca powder actually also contains pregnenol pregnenolone, the um, hormone um, precursor to progesterone and DHEA, all right, which then produces testosterone and estrogen. And cortisol is made from progesterone. So you will find automatically problems with hypothalamus, you'll find problems with progesterone, you'll find problems with thyroid, and you'll pr find problems also with dopamine. And generally, the, as the serotonin levels are low as well. So this cortisol to get produced, it draws off all of these, all of these areas. So that's why you find um, adaptogenic herbs and almost um, oxygen all help this whole, whole um, arrangement here. So I wanted to really um, put that out there for the practitioners because when there's a low progesterone, one needs to look you need to look at the cortisol, the thyroid, the same. So that whole hormonal cascade um, starts becoming depleted and out of balance. And we, we're focusing on people who have ultimate health, ultimate, ultimate health. That's where we're going with what we're doing. So we need to find out more things about our body that we never knew. So let's just go back to the videos. I want to add a new one. All right, so let's show, let's show this one. Hi, I'm Dr. John Calvin. Welcome to the short tutorial on your brain on anxiety and stress. It is essential to know how our brain responds to the stimuli which trigger an anxiety response so that you are equipped to deal appropriately with anxiety. Let me highlight the key areas of your brain that are involved and then I will explain what happens inside the brain. The thalamus is the central hub 
for sights and sounds. The thalamus breaks down incoming visual cues by size, shape and colour, and auditory cues by volume and dissonance, and then signals the cortex. The cortex then gives raw sights and sounds meaning, enabling you to be conscious of what you are seeing and hearing. And I mention here that the prefrontal cortex is vital to turning off the anxiety response once the threat has passed. The amygdala is the emotional core of the brain, whose primary role is to trigger the fear response. Information passing through the amygdala is associated with an emotional significance. The bed nucleus of the stria terminals is particularly interesting when we discuss anxiety. While the amygdala sets off an immediate burst of fear, the BLST perpetuates the fear response, causing longer term unease typical of anxiety. The locus ceruleus receives signals from the amygdala and initiates the classic anxiety response, rapid heartbeat, increased blood pressure, sweating and pupil dilation. The hippocampus is your memory center, storing raw information from the senses, along with emotional baggage attached to the data by the amygdala. Now we know these key parts, what happens when we are anxious, stressed or fearful? Anxiety, stress and of course fear are triggered primarily through your senses. Sight and sound are first processed by the thalamus, filtering incoming cues and sent directly to the amygdala or to the cortex. Smell and touch go directly to the amygdala, bypassing the thalamus altogether. This is why smells often evoke very powerful memories of food. Any cues from your incoming senses that are associated with a threat in the amygdala, whether that threat is real or not, current or not, are immediately processed to trigger the fear response. This is the expressway. It happens before you consciously feel the fear. The hypothalamus and pituitary gland cause the adrenal glands to pump out high levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Too much cortisol short circuits the cells of the hippocampus, making it difficult to organize the memory of a trauma or a stressful experience. Memories lose context and become fragmented. The body's sympathetic nervous system shifts into overdrive, causing the heart to beat faster blood pressure to rise and lungs to hyperventilate. Perspiration increases and the skin's nerve endings tingle, causing goosebumps. Your senses become hyper alert, freezing you momentarily as you drink in every detail. Adrenaline floods to the muscles, preparing you to fight or run away. The brain shifts focus from digestion focus on the potential dangers, sometimes causing evacuation of the digestive tract through urination, defecation or vomiting. Heck, if you're about to be eaten as someone else's dinner, why bother digesting your own? Only after the fear response has been activated does the conscious mind kick in. Some sensory information takes a more thoughtful route from the thalamus to the cortex. The cortex decides whether the sensory information warrants a fear response. If the fear is a genuine threat in space and time, the cortex signals the amygdala to continue being on alert. Fear is a good, useful response essential to survive. However, anxiety is a fear of something that cannot be located in space and time. Most often, it is that indefinable something triggered initially by something real that you sense, but that in itself is not threatening, but it is associated with a fearful memory. And the bed nucleus of the stria terminals perpetuate that fear response. Anxiety is a real fear response for the individual feeling anxious, and anxiety can be So yeah, very interesting. The fear, the fear comes in as a result of, of the sensory perception and the, the anxiety then comes and everything flows into that and the body then starts hyperventilating, et cetera, et cetera. The blood starts moving, the vessels co start constricting, the heart start pumps, starts pumping harder. And what happens is, is that when it's prolonged, that's when you get the chronic disease. That's when you get chronic high blood pressure, chronic cardiac failure, um, the, the, all the chronic, chronic inflammation even. Um, even the DNA gets constricted when there's stress. So when the DNA gets constricted, the certain genes switch off automatically just because the protein around the DNA has got too tight. So when we, re we relax, we allow that to happen. And almost gold is one of the substances that allows the relaxation of the DNA, even the, even the helix unravels. 
very, very important product. Um, let's go back to some of our slides. And what we were saying here was that um, we wanted to find out things about our body that we never knew about. So um, I've showed you um, physio physiologically, um, you know, two videos that show the stress response and the other one that shows what's going on in the brain. And so many times you will get the, amygdala, the amygdalas out of balance. That's the fear center, the hippocampus is out. That's all your memories, all your stored memories. It's often called the limbic system. So um, again, you know, apart from hypothalamus, pituitary and pineal being in working order, so does, so does the whole um, rest of the cortex need to be working properly. And able to work pop properly, have the nutrients to work properly, and not have toxins in the way. So the the, the more the um, the um, brain is challenged from a stress point of view, um, the, the 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 less likely it's going to be able to um, assist you when it comes to fear and anxiety and keeping that internal milieu in, in homeostasis, you see? So some people um, can do it easier than others, and generally a clean body can do it a lot easier in my experience. And I see a clean body also on the CLA scale to be more able to adapt to stress. So definitely toxins get in the way, definitely emotions, definitely mental, uh, mental toxins get in the way. If you're not living on your purpose, all of those things get in the way. I want to just show you from the quantum device um, some, some interesting information just for those who, who are interested. So this is giving me some information to start with that uh, adrenals, occipital load of the brain, or it's a center that's associated with stress. Adrenals we know is associated with stress. Okay, so adrenal stress, adrenal shutdown, ex extensive stress. But then you look at the person, and these are the top risk factors as listed over here. So I don't expect you to read that, but read from here. So there is an infection. The bones are infected too. There's a circulation issue. There's a stress issue. Stress is going to affect the immune system, definitely. There's adrenal function, and we've got some more parasites sitting there, and even the breathing is compromised. So you can see what's happened here from a stress picture. It's, it's, it's not an abnormal situation. It's totally normal. This is exactly what happens. Stress, breathing, um, lack of sleep not wanting to eat food, not able to digest food, all just actually compounds and makes it more and more difficult for the person to actually get back to homeostasis. And this slide here, if you have a look at um, this, particularly these levels here, now this is exceptionally high. So these levels should be 100. So adrenaline is really, really pumping. It's really pumping around the body. So is the cortisol, way above, above normal. Um, so there, no wonder we've got low adrenal function. No wonder we've got adrenal shock. And then we also it also brings in and exacerbates inflammation on the prostaglandin cascade, histamine. Um, and then it's going to affect the testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, as I showed you earlier as well. So everything starts getting affected. Now look at the pineal pituitary and hypothalamus level. That's 162 out of 100. So we see it's been challenged, all right? And um, we, need to, we need to start balancing the homeostasis here. You will always find allergies when there's emotional emotion and stress. The body can't cope. It's, it's not an intolerance. Intolerance is like a chemical intolerance, but allergies are related to emotions. When you clean the body, when you get rid of the emotions, the allergies go away. And here we've got the two parasympathetic, if you like, um, uh, neurotrans uh, not, uh, no, neurotransmitters, um, hormones secreted, the corticotrophin and then the acetyl um, choline. So this is the one that comes out of the, the adrenals and this is the one that acts on the kidneys. So what we want to do here is we want to lower the sympathetic nervous system um, secretions and we want to um, in, in, engage the 
parasympathetic one so that we can reach a balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic. The parasympathetic ones are responsible for digestion, circulation, elimination. And if they're out of alignment, they're going to close it down, as, as the video showed us. If the adrenaline and that sp uh, spikes too high, it's going to, we're going to have a nervous breakdown. So um, we want to look at all of these things in context. And this is an extremely stressful person, very, very stressful. And here's some more effects on um, growth hormone, te testosterone, the bridges that come down. But what I wanted to share with you here is the um, serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. So I mentioned earlier that the dopamine um, levels reduce with stress. So, um, But also, you normally get similar um, issues with serotonin and oxytocin. So this normally leads to someone going on to an antidepressant, a serotonin blocker, blocking, blocking the uptake of serotonin. Oxytonin is the is a motherly bond. And yeah, I mean, that, that level is a huge level, 278, it should be 100. So there's big, big lack of, of emotional bond and linkage. Um, this happens to be a male, by the way. So you can see how this all plays out in a person's life. There's the adrenal insufficiency. These this persons on many medicines. This person is actually in a wheelchair. And there's all the effects, all the stress hormones. So the, all those stress hormones, neuro, neuro hormones, neurotransmitter hormones, the, the release, the release center. Okay, that's actually getting fed information from the liver via the blood to the hypothalamus. So the Chinese always say, clean the liver, clean the blood, and they are 100% correct. <laughs> and here's just also for interest's sake, I'll make this one a bit bigger here. So this is when we talk about always being able to measure and test and check performance and all the rest of it. The white levels here are the previous assessment. The yellow levels are the levels when the patient started before, before an hour. And the gray areas, the gray figures are, are the figures after an hour, the retest figures. So you can see um, the, with the hypoadrenal, this person, um, it was probably about two weeks ago. This is, this is probably, and bear in mind, this is probably about the sixth skier session, right? So we've been building up from very, very low here with the, with the kidneys and the adrenals here. That's what the V means. So we started uh, two weeks ago was 36. We started, so it kept and it raised, right? So that's impressive for me because we're on an upwards, upwards swing. 47 out of 100, and by the time I'd finished, we were on um, 57 out of 100. And the brain amplitudes, that's good on that person. This here is the resistance factor, resistance toxicity. And what happens is that the, the medicines that this person's on are just creating havoc, creating huge, huge, huge amounts of um, toxicity. And the pain that this person is suffering is huge as well. So um, we've got to kind of look at this figure in, in relation because they sometimes have to, to take three very strong painkillers. Now, this particular person <laughs> has been blocked. The patterns of, have, have um, repeated, repeated, repeated numerous opportunities to exit the planet, numerous somehow comes back again. So there's got to be a question of, about what's blocking you, what are you not addressing, what happened. And there is a, a three-year-old childhood event when this, this patient heard something, overheard his mother, his aunt, and his granny speaking in a kitchen um, in Israel and heard something very bad, which has never actually happened. It's never actually manifested. Now, this person has lived with this stressful emotion the entire life, completely blocked, hasn't breathed properly, the bones have, have contracted, all sorts of parasite infections, etc. is now wheelchair bound and having at this late age to deal with an emotional blockage that hasn't served him his entire life. Saying to me, Jane, if only we'd spoken about this 40 years ago, 
you know, I would have been able to um, have 40 years of, of, of a much better situation. So this is where we see that we need to, we need to live on purpose. This person is not, it's ignored, 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 ignored. And the universe is, you know, it's, I mean, it's relentless. It's saying to him, you know, you need to, you need to step up now. And are we not letting you go until you actually do step up? Here's another, another graph to have a look at. So you see the immune system gets um, stressed. The DNA gets stressed. There's the emotional or, or disorder. There's the stress. The circulation gets stressed. The adrenal, of course, the functioning, the bone and that we, that we mentioned before. And all, all sorts of things start, start happening. So I hope I've painted a bit of a real life situation for you as to what starts happening when there's stress. And we need to recognize it. But even in the case of this patient, um, things like adaptogenic herbs, almost gold, they all work towards calming, calming the patient down. Okay, so it does help. There are things that definitely do help. And as well as meditation, as well as exercise, etc. So other causes of disease other than stress, you know, we, we always talk about poor food, poor breathing. Probably my number one. Poor detox, sitting diseases, many, many people sit too much, the blood slows down, the red blood cells get sticky. Again, not enough oxygen, not enough food to the cells. The body's charge, the electromagnetic charge gets too low, the voltage, the amperage, the resistance, those, uh, that little test, red test panel that I showed you earlier. It's all shown there. Um, that goes out of alignment, lack of exercise, lack of water, lack of sun, lack of touching the earth so there's many many causes and you can you know do your own checks and balances there and one of the things that's um you know epi means above genetics so we, we're born with a set of genes from our ancestors and hereditary factors and maybe they had sitting diseases maybe they had a very big stressful depression so the depression was within the granny and the mother and the daughter or the the grandfather and the son and the and the uh, grandfather, the son, yeah, and the child. Um, so those patterns replay themselves, and the DNA is absolutely damaged. But we can we can repair that with the quantum device. We can repair the DNA with talking, unconscious choices, giving the body, filling the body up with the right frequencies, the right foods, the right lifestyle. We can we can make a very big improvement, and we can measure it. The epigenetics is what's happening from the environment over and above the genetics. Environmental, the importance of the environment and stress is huge. And um, this is where we need to really consider, you know, um, are we getting up in the morning, getting on transport, working in, a, in an office environment, four walls, very small window, um, not really looking out, getting back into the transport, getting home, might be late, and never really stopping and looking outside, never taking ourselves outside, eating processed foods, it's going to have an epigenetic effect on us. And, you know, something like COVID and lockdown, I mean, it's definitely, I believe, if you chose fear, if you chose the fact that your glass is not half full, in other words, if you if you chose it's half empty, it's going to cycle, cycle you down. So we need to be at that present moment. I always say 365 days of the year, 24-7, every second you have a choice to choose healthy or unhealthy. Healthy or unhealthy food to eat, thoughts, emotions, and is this serving me or not, whatever I'm doing. So we need to be very aware of this because this is then shaping us. And many people chose the glasses full in lockdown and have absolutely excelled. So again, it's up to us, it's up to our cho the choice that we make. And we want to follow prevention is better than waiting for when it's too late. We absolutely do, because we don't want that wake up call. We don't want to cycle down so much that our battery is so, so flat that we can't even produce adrenaline to get up in the morning. So we want people thinking clearly and living productively. This is really, really what we're aiming for. And we want to, to be able to um, go for ultimate health, close those risk factor gaps, become health avatars, if you like. And remember always that we're in this inter interconnected space. 
So here's an example of one of our people. There's definitely stress here, physiological stress, physical stress, you can see it. And piled in on top of this would have, would have been an R were mental, emotional, and spiritual issues. So when we started detoxifying on every level, nourishing on every level, um, look what happens. And it happens spontaneously, automatically, and in the flow. So this person has removed huge amounts of stresses and has probably given themselves 30, 40 years extra of high quality living, living the life they came to live as opposed to choosing unhealthy. So we assessed the root causes, we measured the risk factor gaps, and we closed them. We used our quantum devices and we used quantum food state nutrients. The quantum device is addressing physical, neurological, emotional, and spiritual. The, the products do as well. So when you consume products and you the quantum electroceuticals, it's in the form, it's in the quantum form, the body recognizes the innate potential kicks in to heal. The body's provoked and it does what it needs to do. And you sit back because the products worked automatically on their own. And the people come back and you get very, very, very good results. Very encouraging. So some practical steps here for us to just sort of take home if you like. Um, we need to sleep well. 10 o'clock we need to sleep. There's a reason for that. The serotonin melatonin cycle. Serotonin switches off at 10, melatonin comes in, melatonin leaves it to it in the morning and serotonin kicks in again. Unless you've had that melatonin release, deep state dreaming, huge nourishment of the nervous system, you're going to have stress in the day. So we have to look at the laws of nature. Beauty and vitality are gifts from nature for those who abide by her rules. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci. So we need to observe these things. We need to observe what we call circadian rhythm. So my chickens will get onto their roosts at the same time every single day, a rain, wind, shine, drought. They get on their perch. Their feet are, are, are solidly on the earth the whole time during the day that they're awake. They are in sync with the earth's circadian rhythm. They don't have a, a light to switch on. They don't have a television to switch on. They get on their perch and they go to sleep. Even if I take food in there, I've tested, they won't get off. They'll chirp and they'll clack and they'll do all these things, but they won't get off their perch because they know it's time to sleep now. It's not time to eat. What do we do? Some of us... I mean, I believe in Malaysia, the food ven venues are open 24-7. Literally, you can go and get a takeaway 24-7. Now, I mean, imagine what that's doing to your circadian rhythm, your stress that's added to it, your blood pressure. I saw, because I've seen people, and I've done assessments on them. It's it's hideous. And and the downward spiral and the toll on the body is take years of your life. And, and, and like uh, Dr. Sele says, when it's prolonged stress, that's when, when, when huge degeneration sets in. So again, the choice is ours, right? We need to sleep well. We need to rest the nervous system. Get up at three, four in the morning. That's fine. That's perfect. The earth's waking up. It's not about that. It's about being, it lights off. And when we sleep, we, we need darkness so that the melatonin is released. We need the sunshine. We need the photons, all right? Because you can see in, in countries where there's low levels of sunlight, higher levels of depression. Some people have glass desks with a, a health light underneath it, beaming through their eyes, through the pituitary into the, into the hypothalamus to balance the homeostasis. So sunshine we need. Some people in sunny countries uh, need sun. We need the earth energy. We need to get on the grounding. We need um, proper water, structured water. Otherwise, the body can't recognize it. I had a lady yesterday drinking four liters of water today, and yes, four liters of water a day, and she's dehydrated. How come? The water's not structured. Okay. And then the body can't recognize it, has too much work to do to um, rearrange the, the water into the right quantum spin structure that that water passes through. And she gets thirstier and thirstier and thirstier. And if you happen to be drinking reverse osmosis waters, it, it's even worse. Just to say, it would be better to take tap water and, and make a vortex and pour it from tumbler to tumbler for about five minutes and reenact and restructure the water yourself. You can do that. Just to say, breathing, 
We've got huge apparatus for breathing. We need to make extensive use of it and to breathe out properly. Exercise, our bodies are made to move. Have to move. We have to get the blood moving, the blood cells moving. Good nutrition, and, and we must include a detox program in our, in our daily, weekly, monthly, by um, every two months, quarterly, annual program. You have to consciously do it. That's what I said in the beginning. Get your diaries right so that there's no excuse and you've allowed yourself the time to do that. So the yes foods. Um, whole foods. We've got to eat foods we can recognize. has to be. We can't eat segmented foods. White bread, white flour, um, white rice. The whole brand, the whole soul wall has been removed. And that's not going to build a body. It's frag fragment. Raw foods, the more raw foods you have, the more enzymes you're going to get. Enzymes are necessary for all metabolic processes as well as digestion. Metabolic processes are oxygen transfer, water transfer, for example. You find it in the microbiome reset that, that we ferment. But apart from that, you get, you get the, um, the enzymes in the raw food for our metabolic pathways. ATP, energy cycles. You get some in veggies, but mainly in um, fruit, by the way. So you would go for the green apples, the berries, the kiwi fruit, the pears. Very good. Cold pressed oil is very, very important because a heated oil, oil that's been exposed to light or air, is a free radical. A free radical causes stress in the body. It damages the DNA, damages the heart, damages the red blood cells, damages all the cells. We can't have free radicals floating around. That's why people take antioxidants. They go and scavenge the free radicals. An oxidant will also take care of the free radicals. So we have to work on, on um, cold-pressed oils and also limit the amount of heated protein because all too often I see problems with digestion of oil and protein. So oil will then stay in the blood and go around the liver and all the organs. Protein will actually concentrate in the, in the kidneys and will eventually cause stones and uric acid crystals and a whole mess and poor filtration in the kidneys. So we have to be very careful of, of oils and proteins. Go, you can swap some of the meals out with spirulina, um, um, blue-green algae, chlorellas, medicinal mushrooms, they're all pollen, they're all complete proteins, and they give you more energy than it takes to digest. A heated protein takes an enormous amount of energy from the body to, to, to digest, and it doesn't. It only will only digest about 10 to 20%. So if you eat a piece of steak the size of your palm, only 20, 10 to 20% is getting utilized. The rest has got, the body's got to do something with so very important, the, the food choices, 365 days a year. <laughs> the no foods, I think we know these, but, but boy, do they cause free radicals? Do they cause digestion problems? Do they cause the stomach to slow down and stop? Do they cause reflux? They cause all these things. The heated fried, fried chips, I mean, when you put a carbohydrate into heated oil, you basically get a, a plastic that gets formed. And it's just completely toxic to the body. What does the body do with toxins? It's got to put them somewhere. Then a cyst will form. And then it becomes benign. And then it can become malignant. So let's, let's reduce the workload on the body. Let's allow the immune system to strengthen and operate properly. And then it doesn't matter what gets thrown at us as humans. We'll be able to cope. So processed foods are a very big problem. It's always, it's always got modified starch. It's always got wheat as a thickener and a modified starch is modified um, corn and that's genetically modified heated oils we've talked about white potato it does terrible things to the blood it, it um, lets all the red blood cells stick together regardless of your blood group it's a toxin basically and it's very hybridized sugar is disaster absolute disaster inflammation and it causes stress because it actually uh, utilizes too much vitamin B in the metabolism. Vitamin B is the enzyme for that helps us cope with stress. 
So sugar is a no-no. You need we need to give it up. Corn it's genetically modified, as I said, and also when it's stored, it it uh, accumulates blastomycosis. It's a fungus that causes dementia. So you know the research is there, the information is there. It's up to us. If you go and buy yourself chocolates and eat cookies and drink coke after a presentation like this, then then I, I don't know. Then I think the downward spiral is 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 pretty low because. When the evidence is here and the amount of stress and the amount of people on anxiety products, antidepressant products, high blood pressure, diabetic products is there, um, you know, yeah, well, the choice is ours at the end of the day. So at 365 Healthy by Choice, we, we, we are 24-7 virtual, immediate and global. And I've specifically designed the centers around this. So we, we, um, we, will offer this kind of situation to people. We have de-stress morning packages where people come and realign themselves, especially um, government leaders, frontline leaders, medical people that have been working in COVID, with COVID. The fear is unbelievable what they've been through. The fear, the anxiety, the not knowing. Uh, so many of them, government leaders, business leaders, come and they relax. And they avail themselves to the services and unwind and get in the sun, put, take their shoes off for the first time in a very, very long time. And we'll do an assessment for them. We'll do some live blood. We'll do nutrients and um, detox products, immunity building products for them. We use the quantum devices. And then we offer business opportunities to people. So we've got a practitioner business in a box option where we've got a, um, a, a quantum device and some beautiful modules that I've put together. And basically, people can start after they've gone through the training and, and assist other people there and then. So you start earning immunity. And this is just wonderful after, after lockdown. There are many people that have spent a lot of time um, understanding health. They've done anatomy and physiology courses. And they can spread the word and take the 365 Healthy by Choice philosophies out there to the world and demystify health and um, in, in terms of making themselves and closing their own health gaps, they can close the health gaps of others. And then we have uh, a world of people that are thinking clearly and living productively in all areas of their lives. And we, we also offer career planning, like short, medium and long term courses as well in health, right up to an NPQ certification in the UK that's international. So we've really, really put, um, you know, ultimate health in an interconnected way um, to people. And um, we're really growing and we're really enjoying this. So I wanted to put this in here so that you know that there is an end result behind all, all of this. And here's an example of the, the little device over there. And this is in a, in a, in a shop environment. You can, you can do these, uh, have your little center in a um, wellness center, in, a, in doctor's rooms, in corporates whereby we can make a massive effect quickly. I mean, we can do like 50 readings over a weekend. That's 50 people we've touched. We've talked to, we've consulted, we've given them some um, quantum food state nutrients and they've shifted. They will never be where they were. They've gone a step towards um, wellness and um, ultimate health. So there's all, all of that listed just to show you practically and um, so there's our business in a box option. And that can obviously lead to, to um, small, medium and large centers as well. And there's our shop. And I just want to show you some of the shops, um, uh, some of the products for stress. So um, let's just start with the adaptogenic herbs mainly. So uh, we've got a brain fill box. We've got a stress box of four products usually. And in and in that in this box, we've got an almost gold. There's that that presentation and that presentation of almost gold. That's the alchemic alchemical gold, um, three dimensional M state. So it's not in the physical gold; it's in the in, in liquid. And there's more almost gold on the planet than there is actually physical gold. Just by the way, <laughs> so um, almost gold crosses the blood brain barrier, cleans up, detoxifies and nourishes and raises the, the, um, the charge of the body. It's like plugging in your cell phone into the, uh, into the charger into the wall and suddenly your cell phone gets charged again. That's what almost gold does. Calms the body, calms the nervous system and, and reduces stress. 
it increases your ability to to um to cope with stressful situations okay very 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 important product and then we've also got stress defense shield and brain fuel these have got over 30 nutrient dense foods i was in the health pharmacy this morning there's not a product like it not a product close to it with over 30 nutrient dense foods and adaptogenic herbs so there must be about nine adaptogenic herbs i'm talking about rhodiola ashwagandha astragalus um shatavari shizandra berry and so on and so on and so on um medicinal mushrooms six of them three algaes um all geared to adapting with inside you and meeting your needs and your criteria balancing the hormonal levels bal balancing the sympathetic and the, and the uh, parasympathetic nervous system balancing levity and gravity balancing the shen, the qi and the jing, balancing all of these, that works automatically inside the body. It's too awesome. So this is really, really amazing. And it sets up an, an, an insurance field, if you like, against stress, coping with stress. So these products are available. It's up to us to, to take them and, and swap things out of the shopping basket, get rid of the white bread, get rid of the sweets, get rid of um, heated oil, and bring in the flaxseed oil, cold pressed flaxseed oil, highest electron spin, highest life force. These products have all got life force, almost means a life force. It's, with, it's what allows spring water to rise up against gravity, come to the top of the hill and then come out from the bottom of the earth. Or um, the sap from the roots of the trees to rise up at the tall, tall trunk to get to the top where the leaves are. That's almost. We need it. It's not in the soil and the food anymore. Hardly. So these top super high vibrational foods are the ones that we need to be consuming that leave us with more energy rather than less. Energy capacitor foods. Okay. And there's also oxygen here, which is very important too, because of its ability to clean, because of its ability to um, recharge the cell membrane. It basically works as an energy capacitor, massive detoxifier, and um, well, oxygen is nourishment. It's a nutrient. So those are really, really great products, and I have some more. Um, well, we talked about the hypothalamus. So I've got the male and the female um, hormone balance here, which really rebalance the neuroendo um, hormonal release, the cellular release of hormones, because we're together with oxygen, it resets that cell membrane and things start happening in the hypothalamus, pituitary and pineal glands. Um, inside here, we've also got something for the liver to clean the liver and the blood. So we start getting that whole hormonal cascade happening. There's adaptogenic herbs also to moderate stress. So these are two beautiful products. Um, that I've put together food and adaptogenic herbs and all the building blocks for progesterone, estrogen, um, adrenals, liver functioning, bone functioning, thyroid functioning, all the building blocks are there. <laughs> so the body can take what it wants, when it wants and, and rebalance itself into that homeostasis. And then we've got a stress adaptogen mix, which is, it's got, and we've got them in the male and the female. We've also got it in the stress adapt, uh, in stress defense shield, but there are five of them here. So we've got, you know, the, the type of rhodiolas, ashwagandhas, astragaluses, ginsengs, um, in here to, to really on a, so the, these would be more straight adaptogen herbs only as opposed to food. And here's a beautiful one as well for stress, macuna bean. It's actually sweet. It's a white powdered bean. And I'm very instrumental in nerve endings, restoring of, even after chemotherapy, bringing calmness, balancing. It's a jing food, balancing energy. Um, it actually increases breastfeeding. It increases libido. Um, actually also um, builds muscle. So the weight, weight lifters and that also like macuna bean too. So, I mean, I hope I've given you some good examples of products for stress. Completely natural in the food state form. So that adaptogen means it's adapt adapting with you. And here are the oxygen products. We have a pure liquid oxygen. We have oxygen in capsules. And we also have a supercell oxygen, which is a cell, uh, an oxygen activator. 
So it's got pollen in it. It's got cordyceps medicinal mushrooms. It's got Siberian ginseng. These all um, activate oxygen in the body as opposed to giving straight oxygen. See, so we've got it whole, we've got it cornered. And to this extent, we've formed our affiliation. We've launched it over the last two weeks. We've got uh, well over 20 affiliates already, and they are part of the inter interconnect um, ultimate health connection. And they are busy also now um, educating and um, providing courses, devices, products, consultations to people that wouldn't normally know and be aware of the fact that what we do where we determine root causes, validate risk factors, and uh, realign the body, and measure and track progress. So this is essential um, if we're really moving forward. And well, you know how to contact us. So this presentation was, is, has got a global space. So um, if I just come back to did somebody want to speak? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, let me just get back to the chat. So um, any questions on, on what I've spoken about? Um, I've tried to just, you know, in the hour, give you some biology, a little bit of, you know, on the, um, the, the biology of the brain, what happens with stress, some products, some good foods, some detoxification and I, I believe that you're all equipped now to go and actually write down a program for yourself a plan if you like to reduce stress on every level from food to relaxation to creativity and you could make a list and you could say listen these these things that i'm doing are, con con are contributing towards a positive stressful situation positive stress new stress and these things are contributing to a very stressful negative stress situation in my body i need to give this up this up this up this up and honestly if anybody needs help you know contact me we can get onto the um the device and we'll have the answers within within minutes we'll have the answers seriously because we give the subconscious a chance to talk and we give it a voice and it actually tells us so it's very non-biased um non-verbal and makes use of many, many, many modalities. It will even tick the herbs. It'll even tick macuna bean. It'll even tell the uh, um, the therapist macuna bean, Siberian ginseng, got you cola, you know, whatever the products are. So it's really, really amazing. Um, yeah, and just to say thank you very much for coming in this evening and um, being part of this. The, the next presentation we have is on Saturday, where we're going to be talking, actually, Daisy Dubonnet is going to be talking about sexuality, and I think it's going to be incredibly enlightening, a huge reset for most of us. And um, let's wait until then. I'll be um, sending out the webinar links, but I think all of you know by now, you know, on a, a Tuesday I do immune, on Thursday, we do the live chat. On Saturdays, we do the um, immune um, live lecture. And on Mondays now, we've introduced a time slot for affiliates. If you want to join the affiliation, please go onto the website, click on affiliate, put your information in. It comes to me. I am I am looking to see who the affiliates are because we need to walk the talk. So um, you need to be part of the vibe, the 365 Healthy by Choice vibe, look the part, etc. And then you get your affiliate link and you get percentages off, etc. And um, for all your referrals. And then um, actually on a Tuesday before the immune chat, we have the practitioners get together, the practitioners who've bought into practitioner health business in a box, the centers, the franchises, and we do case studies and training on products and training on diseases. And then on a Wednesday, we have um, the presentation. So if I've done stress today and I've done epigenetics and quite involved stuff, it would be a very watered down, superficial 20 minute discussion on stress. And then leading into today, which is for all of you who've been with us for so long now and educated and in the space. So that's, yeah, it's the whole week worked out, but um, I'm really wanting to, educate and take take us all 
you know, with quantum medicine into the new space, into the new paradigm. And remember, there's always perpetual harmonic renewal, so we're never standing still. We're learning every day <laughs> and all that. Um, so um, Saturday and next year, Saturday is 7, South African time 7. Everything's at South African time 7, except for the my immune students, which is 8 o'clock. South African time on a Tuesday. The rest of it is all seven o'clock. All right, and I try to record most of them and and um, put it out for those people because I know it's difficult. I'm trying to actually put the world in one in one time zone, and it's a little bit difficult. So just bear bear with me time wise. But it's much easier if you all know the regular time and something's on. Thank you so much for joining. It's just wonderful to have people from all around the world um, as one, one space and working collectively together. Okay. With that, I'm going to close. And I hope you've loved this evening. I've loved being with you. And um, let's take something, take something back. Let's shift some, some in some way ourselves. Okay. Thanks so much.